Well, hello, everyone, and welcome for another live stream with uh, the Canadian Schoolhouse. I'm Christine, and today we've got and Stephanie <laughs> and Barbary. I'm Barbary, and we're so uh, happy today because we're going to be talking about gardening. And I know I am not a gardener. I do not have a green thumb. So I am looking forward to uh, hearing what these ladies are going to share. I've already seen the pictures and I'm excited. So uh, before we get going, let's just do a few announcements. Um, so just so that you know, we, we did a virtual family retreat back in the fall and there are so many great resources for family for families and we want you to have access to them. And so it's there at the virtualfamilyretreat.com. Um, you can check out all the speakers and all the resources that we shared during that event. And uh, if you like what you see, stay tuned because we are planning the next one. So um, just uh, enjoy what you see so far and uh, stay tuned for the, the good stuff coming up. And then, uh, if you haven't signed up for our eBlessed, you are missing out. So if you want to check out that link on our website, which is theoldschoolhouse.com slash the Canadian Schoolhouse, you can uh, click on that sign up button and uh, we will send you um, that weekly newsletter and you will get, uh, again, resources to articles and tips and encouragement on homeschooling um, and anything exciting that's happening within the the old schoolhouse family so you don't want to miss that information and we are looking for writers uh and who better to write about homeschooling than homeschoolers which is you and so we would like you to sign up if you're interested at all and don't feel like you have to be a professional writer we will help you um, throughout that process. Just we want you to share your story and encourage other homeschoolers. And as a perk for every five pieces you publish, you get a $50 gift to Graham. Uh, so that's exciting. And uh, also your teens are welcome to uh, be a part of this too. So if you want to get them, you know, practicing their writing skills, um, which are very important for many jobs, um, feel free to sign them up as well. And again, we'll help you with the process and we're looking forward to hearing um, about how you homeschool. So we will get going with our gardening topic. So, um, so I had already said that I don't, um, I don't, um, I wanna say I don't homeschool, I don't garden. Um, so tell us, um, so do you, uh, garden food, flowers or both? Steph, what, what do you do? I would say I do both. And I, um, inside my house, I love having lots of plants, lots of flowering ones or ones just green. And, and I do it a lot. You know, if you read up on that plants in our house, it adds this oxygen. Well, if you just read up on what plants do in general, right. But it's great to have house plants. So I really, I would say I probably flourish in that area as far as growing, um, plants and flowers and stuff like that. I do that a little bit outside, but really, really minimal. Um, of course, I like looking at pretty things. So I do grow some some plants outside and a few potted flowers and stuff like that. But food is really my, my love of gardening. I love to play in the dirt and just see the food grow up and then just pluck it and eat it right from the garden. Um, I try to save some to actually uh, get inside the house, but uh, yeah, lots of stuff that I just, I love that feeling of being so connected to my food that like I'm growing it. And even though it's a little bit more work, I, I think that's just what God has planned for us. Like do that work to get your food. So I just, I love that experience of food, all the hard work and everything. <laughs> and for you, Barbary. Yeah, uh, my family does uh, both. Uh, but we have it a little bit like um, divided um, in terms of who looks after what. Um, so my mom really enjoys um, actually choosing and selecting uh, the plants, uh, like for flowers. And then uh, my dad is usually the one who plants it. Um, 
but um, I'm the one who plants the seeds for the vegetable beds. So that's like the food side. Um, and just like Steph said, it's really rewarding to see the plants grow and then be able to actually enjoy something fresh and flavorful and so tasty right from the garden. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's just really neat to see as well, like even in gardening, how everyone has different strengths and gifts and um, can use that um, in gardening, whether that's sort of organizing the seeds and choosing them or planting them and looking at mm-hmm. them, watering is what just really, really amazing. Yeah, I love the way you have that uh, divvied up in your in your family. I do almost everything, although I will admit my husband does some of the heavy work too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get him in there for that heavy work, but besides that, I, I almost do everything. But, uh, and, and I think it's gonna come up in one of our questions. Um, I really, I really, I'm trying to really integrate my kids into that. And I bet that's, I mean, I bet you've been doing that for years, right, Barbara, where you've kind of had responsibilities in the garden, even when you were growing up uh, yeah. at home too. It's not just since you've been an adult. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that'll be one of the things I think is going to come up. And if it doesn't come up in our questions, <laughs> gab on that a little bit about getting kids to help in the garden. Uh-huh. So, okay, so specifically tell us your tips on growing food. Whoever wants to go first. <laughs> All right, well, I'll start first again. Um, I, I kind of, my tip is like, just uh, just start and do it and, and look through, you know, one of, one of my favorite things that has been done, and I guess, cause it's just nice little one-on-one socializing time is I love talking to other people that garden. Um, And it's really important, I think, for, uh, you know, you don't have to, you can learn all you want from videos and, and reading and books and, you know, uh, you can learn all you need to on your own. But I, I, I think the being able to learn from somebody else is the best. So whether you have somebody um, that's in your life now, or whether you can find somebody that is gardening, and you can just go and learn from them. Uh, I know I don't live too close to anybody that I do that now, but I used to live uh, quite close to my sister-in-law uh, for one. And she did, uh, she's always done lots of gardening or at least most of the time that I've known her. Um, so we would often have great little chats and I was actually just texting with her this morning um, uh, about that, about this live and and that we were going to have it recorded as well so she could check it out. But uh, I just, I can't help but think about gardening and not think of her, right? Like I just, because we've had so many talks about us growing food together when we actually live closer together when we were like 10 minutes and now we're like four hours away from each other. So anyway, we don't see each other as much, but I also, my, so my sister too, who lives about as far away, um, again, she's, uh, and I'm going to actually share, I'm going to share one of her pictures too, because she has been a big inspiration to me. Um, gardening, overall, but growing food or plants or just anything growing, actually, she's really quite excellent at. And uh, as far as tips on growing food, um, I know she's just always learning herself. I don't think she'd ever say, well, I've just got it all together, but she's always learning new things and trying new things. And we have great conversations as well about gardening. So it's great to have um somebody in your life that you can at least talk with it doesn't even need to be somebody that's on a bigger stage than you but you just have somebody that you can talk with i kind of think that's the best part of gardening so this picture right here is my sister she lives in a she lives in an apartment but it's a house so you can kind of see that really nice old stone um exterior of the house uh a house divided into three or four apartments so she doesn't really have a full yard yard for this apartment or for this house is not really big although she does do a little bit of gardening in the in the land itself in the yard um but really she has lots of container gardening and she just has this laying out her front door is kind of just a little bit to the left of this but she has this area where she can just lay out all her flowers so you can see she's got a real mix and she would be somebody that i i think she's got an even love for for growing food and growing growing flowers she she does a lot of both um, but she has got a real mix of different foods and, and flowers there and mixing them together. Cause I even think this one, um, I don't know if I, I don't think that does a pointer. I'm kind of pointing at it with my, with my mouse, but this one at the front in the Brown or in the black fabric bag, right? I actually think she's got her marigolds, which are actually great companion plants, um, to go with, with growing food, uh, and some, some kind of squash or something there maybe. 
Oh, see, I'm talking about her and here she is right here. I see that Jenna's watching. I was just talking about you, Jen, if, you're, uh, <laughs> if your ears are ringing and I got you on here. <laughs> so she's going to recognize this. This is her front porch from, I'm, I'm going to assume it was last year. I actually don't know what year, what year it was, but I know since she's lived there, she's pretty much done something there every, every year. And then I'm also going to show off uh, the picture she shared with me about her herb harvest. So this is what we really want to get um, from gardening. And I think once you get gardening and you really get to that harvesting stage, that's when it gets most motivating and not just for the, the moms or the adults, um, but also for the kids. Even my kids who are not big vegetable eaters um, are really <laughs> happy about the harvest time. And this year I'm going to work so much better. In fact, I would love any tips that you have again getting your kids motivated to really work regularly in the garden. I do a little bit of coercion um, and I'd like them to be a, 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 trying to get them a little bit more excited to do it themselves. So right now I'm anyway, it's always a new year, always new ideas to come up with and they're both getting older. So um, hopefully there'll be a little bit more willing help in the um, in the garden. Uh, but this is a, so you can see how she's got the beautiful harvest. These are, I would say they're all herbs, uh, here and, like and then it. she's, mm -hmm. so she, she actually gave me when she visited last, she gave me a little mix of, uh, oregano, thyme and sage, I think it was. So that's great. Just having a mix of herbs and you know, fresh herbs. I mean, she's, she's dried them when she gave them to me, they were well dried, but, uh, perhaps even from this harvest right here. So, um, <laughs> so she she says there that was years ago so jen says that was three or that was three years ago mingling of veggies flowers and herbs is more advanced now yeah <laughs> uh -huh. so that's that's one of the best things that i i think of of getting good at gardening so to just just start doing it mm -hmm. whatever whatever amount it may be and then uh and then Get around people who garden as well, so you can talk and share. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so what about you, Brian? You've got some great tips, I'm sure. Yeah, uh, for starting to garden, um, I guess what I'd recommend is um, starting with um, some vegetables or herbs that um, your family really likes, that you like. Mm -hmm. um, so that can be something like, and something that might be a bit easier to grow as well. Um, especially if this, you're just starting out with gardening. Uh, so something like beans and peas are really, I found so far at least, um, easy to grow. Um, mm, and um, and then maybe choose something that um, you also that you also really like, but that might be a bit more difficult to grow, just to kind of give it a try and see um, if it does well in in your garden, whether it is in a pot or in directly in soil. Um, or sorry, directly in the ground. Um, um, either one is fine. Um, and uh, for herbs, again, I'd recommend um, seeing what your family likes. If you like making um, pesto, for example, then, um, you know, definitely grow basil. Um, other herbs that you can try growing are rosemary and thyme. And then um, another thing that um, I've really enjoyed over the last, more recently over the last like two or three years is um, growing um, herbs, but for flowers. Uh, sorry, mm -hmm. herbs, but for tea. <laughs> um, and so uh, for that, um, what I've like growing is chamomile and mint and um, even lavender as well. Um, and so um, I know that sort of when, when here's lavender, um, one doesn't really associate that with growing too well. And um, my family was located in Alberta. Um, and um, they, um, so what we've done is that over the winter, we put mulch on it. So that way the ups and downs in temperature wouldn't affect the plant. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's really important and that does help the lavenders then to um, survive over the winter and then they start growing again in the spring so that's um, a little tip there that mulch um, can help um, to help plants over winter um, and so um so yeah it's been really neat and um yeah um, lavender is something that my mom really likes so um, she is the one who found some plants and then we had it um, here we have planted in our garden uh, but something else that um is really neat too is that you can go and visit some gardens and there are actually lavender farms um across canada um there's um, a few in british columbia as well as um, several in ontario 
um, and Nova Scotia and PEI. So they are and Quebec as well. So they're all across Canada, which mm-hmm. is really neat. So yeah, just um, being able to go and see um, gardens that you like and um, that can help with being inspired to, to grow and also kind of get ideas for my work in your space too. Hmm. So you I mentioned um, doing a lot of Okay, go ahead. Sorry, <laughs> I, I, just to comment on the or like I've been doing a lot of so I've grown herbs, um, many herbs over the years, but I've really been doing a lot of reading on medicinal herbs and really trying to grow grow my own herbs specifically as you mentioned, uh, Barbary for for my own teas and uh, and and just using for various reasons. So um, that's one of, that's probably one of my biggest new things I think I'll embark on this year is really focusing on more growing herbs for medicinal reasons, right? And building up that stock that, that of, of uh, herbs that are just good for, good for the body for medicinal purposes, as well as tasty. <laughs> I know, I know that I, I mean, I don't grow it, but my parents do. And so there's something it's there it just changes the way you your food ends up when you're finished cooking with fresh you know from the garden seasonings and herbs and stuff um compared to what you get in the grocery store i mean it's just it's i I can't even explain like my food tastes so much better when i when i do my shopping in my parents backyard <laughs> but um you were mentioning uh lavender and you had some photos uh barbary to um to uh share with us and oh, yeah. uh you have some tips about like flowers like you talked about the herbs and the food um but tell us about um your tips for gro- uh for growing flowers i'll yeah. put them up for you okay for sure awesome yeah, uh, so some tips for um, growing flowers is to decide first um, in what part of the garden um, you would like to plant them. Um, and then once you decide what part of the garden, then notice how much sunlight um, that area receives. Because uh, again, depending what flower you would like to plant, um, it might require full sun or part sun, part shade, or maybe it, um, it can take quite a bit of shade. Uh, and so that will also help the, the flower uh, to to grow well um, in the space that you decided that you selected on. Um, so just to keep that in mind, um, and then um, yeah, so that kind of really does make a difference in being able to yeah have the flowers grow and um, then maybe down the road enjoying um, a bouquet from your own garden, which is really really nice to have those. Yes, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm, for sure. Yeah, so um, yeah, I see that um, the fl- um, photo is up right now. So those are sunflowers um, back in June 21. So that was last summer. And then I think there's another photo. Yep. Okay, yeah. Um, this is um, one of the sunflowers um, mm-hmm. from those little plants that grew. Um, that was in August um, 2021. So, um, yeah, and, and then, year, Yeah, and then uh, your lavender. Yeah, yeah, that's the lavender. This is in the backyard. Um, and so... And our backyard is south facing, um, but we also do have um, lavender plants in the front, which is north facing. But again, there's like um, it's planted in a space where it does receive quite a bit of like the noon time light, which is really hot during the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's helpful. Mm-hmm. I know I I have tried to um, when I tried to do a little bit of gardening, it was hard. Um, trying to get um, plants that would work with the amount of sun you would get because it changed from the direction Mm -hmm. of where my house was. Like in in the morning, you would get sun, but in the afternoon, you wouldn't get the sun. So is it a plant that needs all day sun or just partial sun? It's it's important to to remember about those things too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. So when you are planning a garden, is it expensive? Is is this something that you need to save up for? Um, Does it require a lot? Uh, Why don't Steph, you answer first? Hmm. 
I'd say no, it doesn't really require anything. And if you get some gardening friends, there's a good chance that you can just get seeds directly from them. So you don't even yes. need to buy seeds. And seeds are not really that expensive either. Uh, although it just depends how many you buy. I mean, I've, I've made seed orders and I've been, I've spent like a hundred bucks. Um, but that, but that was an extensive seed order that, that was just my, you know, I remember that because it was one year that I spent that much and I'm like, wow, that really added up. You just throw this in your cart, this in the cart. And, <laughs> um, oh, and Kaylin says, no, but you can get addicted. Yes. Yes, it is. Um, it, it can be like, and just buying I think that's what happened when I spent like a hundred dollars uh, on seeds. I'm just like, I want to grow this one. Oh, this one looks neat. And if you get into tomatoes, which tomatoes are a really great thing for one thing, they are mostly pretty easy. They're one of those easier plants as Barbara mentioned about getting into like beans and peas. Those are pretty easy. Tomatoes are, are pretty easy. They can get kind of like crazy. Um, and, and you want to try to call, I, I've heard different techniques for that though. Sometimes you want to be able to, uh, nip some of those, um, extra leaves off. And I've seen people just let their tomato plants go crazy. And I've done both as well. Um, I would say I probably get a bigger harvest when I do, I do try to control my plants a little and I can find <laughs> the tomatoes better. The tomatoes get exposed to the sun a little bit better if mm. there's not a, a wild bunch of, um, uh, leaves going everywhere um, and that, but uh, the uh, the gardening uh, it's itself is really it's it's about time. And I would say if I look past the years, like some years I've been able to afford the time, and some years mm -hmm. I just I just haven't been able to put the time into it. Now I I'm actually of the belief that we make time for whatever we really want to do in our lives. So I I don't like to say I didn't have the time. Um, but I just didn't wait the time in some years where, where I'm a little bit more, um, as Kaylin said, uh, using the word addicted, like that's where I'm a little bit more addicted now where I can really end up spending, um, hours playing around in my garden, doing one thing or another. Uh, and, and I don't, I don't feel like it's hours, uh, but just being able to nurture that ground and nurture that, the, those plants and just knowing you're going to plant something and you see it it grow. And I got to say, it's just for me, I also love being out in my garden. It's just a really spiritual time for me. Like I think sometimes about, you know, as I'm pulling the weeds, right, I can come up with scripture of like, of like God working in me and pulling out the things I don't need. And of course, the whole sowing and reaping. And, yeah. you know, for me, it's really, uh, and sometimes I'll even have just my worship music right there with me and be be belting out some some good tunes while I'm in the garden too. Like it's a it's a time of really being um I don't know just enjoying it. And it that it doesn't have to be that way for everybody, but I sort of feel like once you start with it, uh, I sort of feel like everybody gets to that point. Uh, it seems like work because it's something new. Um, and if you just stick with it, uh, and it could be a few years. I know it certainly was for me. Uh, I didn't really enjoy gardening at first. I just, I wanted to be able to dabble. I had, I was at a place where I had to land and, and I wanted to be able to grow our own food, right? It was, it was as simple as that. So, um, and I didn't, I can't say I really love it the way I love it. I love it now. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, it's certainly not cost prohibitive for, for anybody. Um, yeah, Jennifer Jen was just, uh, yeah. Yeah, so the seed collecting and, and sharing helps. And actually, Jen and I do that <laughs> a lot together. I think she probably shares more with me than I do with her um, <laughs> if, if, we were, if we were keeping a tally. Uh, but I uh, had over 100 lines to my spreadsheet from all the places I got to harvest or be shared. Yeah. Oh, and seed libraries, that's actually another almost, I think they're pretty popular. Like, Barbary, have you, do you have seed libraries? Do you, like, do you know what that? Yeah. You know what that um, is? Do you have that around you as well? Yeah, and actually, I've um, seen them in libraries, like actual, like, see libraries in libraries. In the libraries, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have it in our local one, or at least we did. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, uh, there's a common thing around here, and again, I don't know if that's just a little trend here in Ontario or if it goes across 
across Canada or maybe across the world, but CD Saturdays. So it's just a day where there's actually a lot of people get together and one and and some of them share sharing their seeds. Sometimes it's you know, so I've seen gone to some of them where you're you're like buy, like buying seeds, right? So it's just people that have seeds there. Anyway, it's um it's a lot of uh a lot of neat neat community stuff like that that goes on too. You don't need to know somebody, you just see where these kind of things are happening. <laughs> Kaylin says, I think I have three million corn seeds. Yeah. <laughs> with, a, with a laugh at the end. Yeah, I definitely um, yeah. I definitely agree with everything that Steph said about um yeah how um gardening is definitely affordable. Um another idea to consider is um checking out community gardens. Um so that way you mm -hmm. have um, access to um a place to grow um some uh, flowers and veggies uh, but it's also uh, within a community so you might have access to support where you can ask questions um, from other gardeners who have been gardening for longer or kind of um, who are happy to share their knowledge as well mm -hmm. and uh, what sort of things do you need to like if you were just starting from nothing what are some of the tools um that you would need i mean other than the seeds of course and the and the plants to to put in the soil but what else um what else do you need because i know there's um uh specific pots are good and uh specific soil and you were mentioning earlier about the mulching um so do you get do you start off with all of that or that comes later help help me out <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess um, the mulch can come later, um, unless, of course, um, it's kind of getting more like fancy. One wants to landscape, like do a landscape design with mulch, but that's sort mm -hmm. of separate um, mm -hmm. from actually growing seeds or plants or, or flowers. Um, but um, I just recommend um, that having a small and a big shovel is helpful. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. that way, that's a um, one too. Yeah, uh, just sort of, yeah, depending how much soil or or um, one is needing to move around and um, that can help with that. Um, and then I guess just another little tip um, is that what I found um, is that it's really neat to have a gardening journal. Um, it doesn't have to be super detailed, um, yeah. but you can just sort of record um, different things like when um, you first noticed um, a plant uh, flowering and then when it had its first sort of fruits or vegetable on it. Um, and it's kind of really mm -hmm. to compare that then sort of year after year and just see how that changes and also how God provides. Um, mm -hmm. which is really nice it seems like a, like a, a lab report. <laughs> so like, I could totally see this being a school project and getting mm -hmm. the kids mm -hmm. and letting them do the journaling and, and recording and observing this is great. Yeah, and there's lots of things. I think even right within Schoolhouse Teachers. So if your Schoolhouse Teachers member, you can go and check that. Uh, just check that out. I mean, just put gardening in the search term. I should have maybe checked that. I just know I've seen them. I can't even think of a course right now. Um, but lots of uh, lots of nature kind of courses will probably have that gardening aspect into it. So you can kind of you can be able to integrate that into your learning time, into your, you know, the lessons time. And and then ideally get it to springboard off of there where they're just they're just taking that on their own. But I love the idea of journaling, um, not only as the adult, just gardening, just as, as Barbara recommended, just for keeping um, notes. You think, you know, for me anyway, I, I it's so sure like I was going to remember that. And I'm like, now, how, how did I lay out my garden last year? Like, I, I don't remember. I think I'm going to remember, of course, at the end of the season. Oh, yeah, I'll remember this. And I don't. So I've even started doing that. I'll do like the little layout of where I planted things in my garden. And and I, and we're going on a bit of an, an adventure. So I'm actually moving from the house we're in now. Um, and and hopefully by the end of May, so I can get a good, good garden starting somewhere else. Um, but mm -hmm. I, I get to start fresh again. <laughs> most likely wherever I go. So it's going to be like a, a whole clean, clean palette to, you know, create my gardening, gardening artwork on um, somewhere new, which I'm kind of excited about. It's a lot more, it's a lot more work, right? I think of leaving the garden that I put so much to improve the soil and so much to, you know, that I put planted other stuff in there. Um, but that uh, even those notes though, that I've had from this past garden. So partly those notes, so those, 
those maybe where you planted stuff specifically is good because it's good to not there are some plants um that you want to not plant in the same area and good to change around just to know oh well that might do a little bit better in this area you might have a depending how big your garden is you might have like more sun in one area and more um and and more shade right in another part of the garden and another thing um that i think needs to be needs to be mentioned is soil soil probably has been the biggest one for me to really get a handle on and i and i can't say i've got a handle on it besides knowing how important it is i try to use like we compost um so we definitely use our own our own uh, kitchen scraps and and compost them down and we use that in the garden uh and we do have chickens and turkeys and and rabbits so we use a bit of uh manure from from those animals uh it'll be nice at our next place when we have which is really great manure getting it from from cows or sheep is is really great uh composted manure uh really great for just adding nutrients in in the garden and and in comparison to southern ontario where i used to live and now i'm more like central ontario like the soil is completely different i feel like i could almost throw anything where i was in Alora, uh so kind of like guelph kitchener cambridge area um for those that might know ontario a little bit uh that the, and it is really big farming country down there as well um but i feel like i could just like dig up in fact i did that we dug up another side one time doing a garden had a garden on one side of the house and we just dug it up and we just threw potatoes in there and my goodness they just grew like crazy didn't do wow. anything at all to the soil now that's just the difference of soil across canada and that's actually another really great um because that is it. Oh, I'm not going to think of the term, but I know I did it with the boys. Anyway, when you talk about all the geographic areas, right? Like there's the Appalachian, uh, map, the Appalachian mountains. Is that, I'm not even going to say it right. I'm going to, I'm going to sound like such a bad teacher. I'm going to have to take this course again, but we've got the Canadian shield, right? Is where we are. I do know that I live in the Canadian shield. Um, but it's all, it's all kind of dependent on what that somewhat with the soil is depending on what geographic region you're in in Canada. So where Southern Ontario wasn't as much of the, um, I'm not gonna remember what that is. Is it the, no, it's not gonna come to me right now. Um, no, but anyway, it, it's actually a different geographic region, right? There's different things affecting that soil, different things affecting the landscape. Um, so here I've had to bring a lot of soil in. I've, I've actually had probably, we've lived here about seven years and I probably had, probably over the years, like not that I've done every single year, but I've had two or three like yards, like so the great big truck that comes and dumps it off, right? Yards of um, triple mix. So, which is your mix of mm. compost, topsoil and uh, hummus, maybe not hummus I'm thinking of, but um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Anyway, something that adds more lightness to your soil um and so that's something really good and you can buy those in the store just in bags because you not may not need a big of a garden but soil is really definitely mm -hmm. soil makes a difference in how how productive your plants are going to be mm -hmm. i um when i was living in barry ontario um we had tried to start a garden but the soil was so hard um we actually broke a shovel trying to dig it <laughs> dig into oh, wow. it and um, yeah and it was it was just it we we gave up because it was just too much to um to handle to i mean we planted a few hardy plants like some hostas just to fill it out and look mm. a little nice and so thankfully those were that. able <laughs> they were able to um to function um at one point we did talk about trying to do a raised bed garden and i know barbara you wrote an article um and i'm gonna stick that in the comments but why don't you tell us uh some tips from from that article oh, that was a great one yeah for sure um so steph was mentioning um yeah soil is really important too um which again i don't have the best understanding of it all i know is that it does make a difference too <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so we just buy um um some years we buy like a have a company deliver the soil um but other years we just buy a few sort of bags to kind of top it up mm -hmm. um so kind of depending on on the year um and um, yeah there's different types of um, gardening another type is um, vertical gardening uh so if you don't have a lot of space then i guess they'll grow in pots but uh, maybe um 
to have like a trellis. Um, and then some of the plants might be growing up that trellis and then the rest of the plants are kind of in the pot. Um, of course there's container gardening as well. Um, and then yeah, fruit gardening, like growing fruit trees, um, which might need a bit more space. Um, but again, it's really nice to be able to enjoy apples from, from one's yard. Um, so yeah, no, just gardening is, gardening is really rewarding. Um, and just really nice to see how, how it grows, um, over the summer or over the season, really. Mm -hmm. And there's a mm -hmm. lot of argument about when, or at least I've heard of when you actually start, you know, your gardening seasoning, season, not seasoning, season, um, and when it actually, when you wrap, wrap it up, can you shed some light on that? I know it depends on, you know, the, whether it's food or whether it's, um, but there's always that argument about, you know, it's the May 2-4 weekend over here in Ontario when you when people start, um, uh, you know, starting their gardens and stuff. Um, is there is there any tips for that? Um, I guess um, it depends what um, one's planting. Uh, so, for example, uh, and then also it's good to know what zone um, you're sure. growing in. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And... Um, if you like to already, if you want to start plants from seeds, then um, around this time, sort of the time to start them indoors. And that way, by the time mm -hmm. it comes to that May long weekend or so, then the plants are already mm -hmm. ready to be planted outdoors. Um, and that's um, like before taking them from indoors to outdoors, um, you would have them take the plants and sort of gradually get them used to being outside. Um, mm -hmm. And then I know there's different things like greenhouses and um, other such um, like greenhouses and then um, that can extend the growing season on both sides and uh, that can also make a really, really big difference too and how long one can grow um, especially like into the fall and then if there's warmer weather in the fall then that does help for sure mm -hmm. um, so to extend the season. Awesome. Yeah there's so many different types of of gardening that no matter where you are whether you just in an apartment whether and not just where you are but what you feel like committing to because it is a commitment uh yeah. right you want to be able to see these things grow throughout the season like especially if you're if you're interested in food you know although it's unfortunate to see a flower uh plant die um at, at least you don't feel like you're missing out on the food that you were trying to grow, actually something to eat. Um, but there's so many, whether it's uh, container gardening, vertical gardening, um, just so many different kinds of approaches to gardening, raised bed gardening. And I've done so many different, uh, uh, so many different ones like that and, and um, at, at different times and probably almost tried them all. Uh, there's even, I was really into this, like there's a, a four, four foot square gardening. Anyway, it's, uh, you could probably search that name. I know it's somebody that's done that of really just how, how you can almost really pack a lot of food in this four foot by four foot. You can change the dimensions and you would pretty much, I, I think the biggest thing, if I remember correctly about it was really making your soil rich. So you, you'd create this box almost a four by four by four feet. Um, and, and you would put really good soil in there and then you would grow, you would plant your plants actually a little bit closer together than you, than is conventional planting and you can get really good results with that. Actually, my other sister, so, uh, Jennifer's on, was commenting on here as well, but I have another sister named Christine and she did something really similar to that. It wasn't actually square, but she did more of like a, anyway, but it, but it was that she put, she put really really specific soil in there. It wasn't just from the ground. And it was for the reason she she doesn't live too far from me. Um, so she's kind of got that same kind of soil, right? You, you pretty much, you, you need to start, you need to almost add something to all that soil. So um, yeah, it's so neat to hear about different ways uh, of different people, uh, of how we can all garden and like grow food or grow flowers, grow plants. Uh, for so many different reasons, um, and I and I want to mention like whether you're watching this live or or and and you want to come back to this page with your idea, we do create these event pages for each of these live streams, and I especially love this one. Uh, I might come back and and uh, comment in here, but even after this event is done, um, I'm almost 
certain. I'm not, I'm not that versed in Facebook, but correct me if I'm wrong if you know this, Christine, right? We still have this event page open, right? So we can continue yeah. discussion in this page. Okay. I was almost certain, but then I a little bit of doubt creeped in there, like, oh, maybe after the event's gone, posting is cut off. But so no. Nope. So whether, you know, you can comment on the video itself here, but there's also an event page. And the best way I can tell you how to find that event page, if you don't happen to be, if that's not easily found as you're watching this video, um, is to just go to our Homeschooling Across Canada page and click on the events tab, and then you will be able to find all of our events, but you'll, you'll yeah. definitely be able to find this one on gardening there. Um, so just, we want to continue on that conversation. We only want to talk like so long on here, although I could probably sit here and talk <laughs> for another two hours um, <laughs> if we wanted to. I do have a couple of things we do in my afternoon, but, you know, just telling you how long I could really um really end up talking about this uh and it's a really great topic and i think it's something we should all be doing a lot more and just be a little bit more um self-sustaining like in some areas and not just mm -hmm. because you need to or not because you need to um because you can still go to the store and get the food or go go to your local farmers right and get get food go to your local markets um but there's just something about at least growing a little bit of your food and maybe it is just about growing medicinal herbs or just herbs for your kitchen it doesn't have to be a really big uh no. a big kind of thing you do but there's so much that you can grow that you can just have that nice fresh natural natural food there so yeah uh I just want to, I'm just looking at Jen's comment here, square foot compact and layering, layering, I think she meant to say, layering, so, so ground level, mid range and tall, vining things to grow up tall things. So yeah, and it's, I guess, I bet it's really using, um, being able to use vertical gardening in that, that sense, in that square foot gardening um, mm -hmm. concept. So, yeah, lots of things we can learn from each other. So I just love to see this conversation continue on in our on our event page. Yeah, I was gonna say thank you to everyone who's commented and joined in on our conversation today. And for sure, I'll just echo what Steph, Steph said. I mean, let's keep the conversation going because uh, this is learning for me, and I'm sure uh, people are gonna pop pop over and want to join in on the conversation. So you know, if you if you're talking to somebody, Hi, just tell them, <laughs> just tell them to pop over to our homeschooling across Canada page and you click on events and you'll see the whole um, list of our past events. Um, so uh, you're not limited to just this conversation. You can join in any of the conversation or just, you know, strike up a conversation on the page itself. And, and mm -hmm. between the three of us, we are there and happy to chat with you. Yep. Um, awesome. So thank you for joining us and feel free to keep talking on the chat. Um, but we should uh, we should wrap up for today on, on live. Um, so thanks again for joining us. Thanks, Barbary, for joining us for this special gardening chat. Yes, thank you. And for sharing your beautiful pictures and for you, Steph. I know some of them are your sisters. Thanks, Jen, for the pictures. <laughs> um, Apparently, I don't take pictures when I'm in my garden. <laughs> it's okay. You're so busy in the garden. That's okay. You're enjoying it anyway. <laughs> but thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you again in another two weeks. Bye for now. Yes, bye.